up, guys? I'm gonna do some electrical troubleshooting. Um, got a walk-in cooler down. They called just a little while ago and said uh, they had a blown fuse. Feel a whole lot of heat. So, obviously that's my blown fuse protecting my transformer. Let's, uh, let's verify we don't have voltage disconnect is all. And, uh, we'll go from there and figure out what blew our fuse. did have I walked their maintenance guy through checking voltage and supposedly he had all three legs yeah we're dead alright so let's check our other fuses check for grounds right now. I had him check for grounds too. He wasn't really sure. I'm not getting any dead shorts. That fuse is good. That fuse is good. That fuse is good. So the rest of our fuses are good. We gotta figure out where this wire goes and we'll probably find our problem looks like it comes it might come down to our main disconnect here I'm not showing a short there either so let's keep on digging look at our wire diagram see if we can figure out what this feeds. So if we take a look at our wire diagram here, we can see um, this is my 1 amp fuse, this is my 10 amp fuse. This is 10 amps is going to feed my condenser, my compressor. Um, my 1 amp is going to be control voltage, so it feeds this transformer. And then over to here, everything else crankcase heaters, low pressure, high pressure, um, compressor contactor, and fan contactor. So our problem is going to be over here somewhere Let's see what we got going on he put a fuse in it that he had and it blew immediately so got my wires pulled off of my contactors here Let's see if we can get an ohm reading point nine by my compressor Maybe. Yeah, stay on there. 700 ohms. I think that might be our problem right there. That's an unusual reading. Uh, so, let's start from there. Let's get our fuse in it. Let's leave our contactor. Let's put our fan motor contactor back on. And we'll leave our compressor contactor off just to verify. But that guy's gonna be our problem there. It moves freely. Everything seems okay with it. We'll get the covers off and take a look, but uh, looks like that's gonna be our issue. So here's my problem. I could have swore I had a 208 volt coil on my truck, but I don't. At least I'm not finding it yet. Um, we got our wires off. Popped a new fuse in. Uh, that's one and an eighth, but or one and eight tenths or something. That's all. That's all they had. Uh, I don't have one amp either. So I'm gonna kick this guy on. It should come right on. At least the fan motor now, because my compressor's disabled. This is a an industrial type cooler, so it actually runs 
all the time. We got a pressure suction pressure regulator and hot gas solenoid and liquid line solenoid inside. So those things operate off a of PID loop to control the box temp. There went my fan. So we've definitely got a problem there. Now I just gotta find one. Um, so let's go find <laughs> like a condenser ate a bird. What the hell? That needs to be cleaned. Um, let's go find a contactor and at least get this thing running. Uh, we know it needs to be cleaned and everything else, but uh, we'll brush the crap off and try to get this thing running as quick as possible. Alright, so we got a contactor. 230 volt cool. Let's go ahead. We got power off still. Let's uh, mark our wires. One, two, and three. Coming in and out. Make sure we don't screw nothing up on that end. We'll get that contactor changed out and be good to go. So I got a new contactor in. Let's see what a good contactor coil ohms out like. It's not gonna be 700 ohms, I know that. Get on that thing. Showing me open. Oh, I found this. See, my meter lead's coming out. That's our problem. When you wrap your meter leads, this one wants to pull out for some reason. And I've had trouble. It pulls out, and I get no reading or intermittent reading 232 it's still higher than I would expect but this is a 208 volt coil so it's not your normal 24 volts let's go ahead and plug our wires back on here kick the power on Or switch cross your fingers. There she goes. I do have an electronic oil sensor. I do have oil not half the side glass, that's good. Power flashing a little bit, but we got a big load on it, so. So, uh, check inside. Um, I've fixed the leak on this previously. So, uh, I'm pretty sure the charge is going to be okay, but we're going to have to let the temp come down. We're going to have to get rid of our, our bird. So, we can see. Set point's 4 degrees. We're at 8.99. This is actually an alarm here. He actually set... He turned it back. He set the alarm up a little bit to try to get it to run. So basically when this thing alarms, it shuts the whole box down and uh, turns the lights out and everything to try to keep temp. We're starting to come down. You can see see some frost right there but that's liquid line solenoid and hot gas solenoid they will alternate and use the hot gas for defrost and for temp control so we can actually hear our valves operate and that's the hot gas valve going the line stays open as long as it's cooling and the hot gas valve modulates to maintain temperature. And then when it defrosts, it also uses that hot gas valve as well. So from 
here we can see um, temple arms. They're okay right now. Uh, defrost controls, main display. Dang it. Uh, PID display will show my output of my uh, two solenoid valves. So cooling's on, defrost is off right now. It's on my setup. Let's see status. It shows evaporator fans, lights, door heat, room lights. It's a pretty nice control. I like it. You can do just about everything with it. Our set point, so it's a pretty nice control. We're gonna watch. We got a chart recorder too. Um, looks like they just changed the chart recorder when it was down to temp, and then we jumped up. So we're gonna watch for a little while and make sure everything else looks good. Uh, we'll have to come back and clean the coil and all that good stuff. They're not gonna pay me on overtime to clean the coil, but temp's dropping, so that's a good sign. So we got rid of our bird back here. I don't know what the hell all these feathers came from. But uh, last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to let it come down to 10. We're going to put the right fuse back in. I do have a 1 8 fuse. So we're going to throw that fuse in there. That'll be the right one. It ought to be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and tag it, put everything I did. Uh, all those notes are from the last time when I changed out the uh, solenoid valve inside, the hot gas solenoid. Uh, you got to be careful on stuff like this because that kind of threw me for a loop. It's an actually. It's a normally open solenoid valve. So um, when I got that replaced, we had a pretty large leak on the liquid line in there at that solenoid and we lost oil. Um, you can see we got good oil coming back now. I had to add some oil to it when I made that repair. So we got a clear sight glass. I'm drawing some heat out of there. I can feel the airflow, so it needs to be clean, but it's gonna be alright for now. What up guys? So all three zones calling. I got W1, W2 call. So we need to go to the roof. Don't think my problem lies here. Let's get up there and see what we got. We got an old carrier. Not heating, but we got a call. So let's uh see if my blower is running. Blower sounds like it's running. Um, heat exchanger and front retaining plate. <laughs> the usual. Blower is running. Filters all right. So let's get our panels off and dig in and see what's happening. So I haven't taken my control panel off yet because I'm going to give a theory on what happened. I'll bet we took the roll out. With the looks of that front plate, I'll bet the heat exchanger's cracked. So let's pull our panel. Our roll out is the 7 flash. That's probably what's going to be the issue. Where are you? Oh, what well, do you know? Seven flashes. All right. So let's uh, check our heat exchanger. It's probably cracked. And there's your rollout switch right there. So, oh, heat exchanger doesn't look awful. All the usual spots on them indentions. There's a spot right there. Doesn't look like it's all the way through. Yeah, we've got some cracks. There's a couple cracks down there. Hell, there's spots on the bottom here too.
so heat exchanger is going to have to go. Um, we'll, uh, <clears throat> it's not uh, the spots I'm seeing don't look like they're completely rusted out, so we can at least allow it to run while I'm here. It's not going to run for long, anyways, because as soon as you put that panel back on, it's going to trip the rollout switch, regardless of what the heat exchanger looks like, because of that front retaining plate. Um, so it ain't gonna run long. So we'll probably let it heat the space up while I'm here. Let's cycle it back on, make sure everything else works. And then uh, we'll have to get them all, get all the information and get a new heat exchanger. Looks like, looks like there's a little bit of oil. There was a little bit of oil on that line. Discharge line right there. Um, always look at your compressors and um, stuff like that because you go through the headache of changing a, a heat exchanger and a major repair like that and then come summertime because we're right in between now uh, you got a compressor that's dead or goes bad and they just spent all that money they're gonna they're gonna be mad um, I think contactors probably need to go, but they're not awful. So let's get our panel back on, see if this guy won't fire. So just take a look at the blower before we start. I'd say she's a little loose. That's not doing us any favors. Well, thanks for leaving the spare, guys. That helps. Um, we're just going to tighten it up for now. This thing ain't going to run long anyways. We just want to test everything out feel any bearing play or anything crazy needs a new belt we got our belt adjusted you can see all the belt shavings flying around that pulley's worn and it's eating that belt up and then if you can see what I noticed was right there on the corner That bracket is cracked right there so it's gonna bounce a little bit and wear our belts even worse but uh, just noticing all the little things so we can write it all up at once anytime you're gonna do a major repair heat exchanger compressor whatever it may be give everything a good once over so we can see our retaining plate Still pretty intact, fairly solid. Um, could still cause an issue, but you can see all the rust on these burners. Maybe if I grab my flashlight. I mean, they are eight up. Look at that. That is a big ass hole. So, we'll see if it fires, but we're probably going to have some rollout and uh, have to shut this thing down until they can figure out what they want to do. We can see these are newer. That's an old train. Another old carrier. So, two of them, those look like 410, so they've been replaced at some point. <clears throat> from that motor mount being cracked. So we're going to let it heat for a little while, get the space warm, and then uh, we'll shut it back down. It's not going to last. As soon as you put this panel back on, you trip that rollout switch with the retaining plate like it is. So you can see a little bit of the rollout on the last burner. This panel in 
place. Let's cover this with the other panel. Let's start to heat this section up real quick. So it ran for about 10 minutes like that. Put that panel back in place. I'm timing it now. I'm just gonna see how long it takes to trip that roll out. I'm guessing it's not gonna take too long. Check out this old train split system. It's not being used anymore. Wonder how long she lasted. I don't see a date on it. Uh, looks like from the 80s, probably 81, the serial number. I just walking back over here. This we actually satisfied. Uh, so we're gonna cut our gas off. Uh, last thing, we saw the oil on the compressor. Um, only because somebody left me two little sights here so I can see the freaking coal. Don't do this. Even though I can get in here and look at it now without splitting it. That coil is plugged. It's all on the inside there. So, um, plus we've got some damage. This, uh, this is gonna be a candidate for a replacement just because the oil inside there at the compressor and once that uh, coil gets dirty and runs for so long, so hot, it will start to gum up that oil and uh, start to restrict our orifices. And it would not surprise me if it's not restricting already. But that problem's for another day. Hopefully we get a new unit up here. We see a couple other new ones, so. Uh, we're gonna shut the gas off on this guy the it's not gonna run like this anyways so uh, just a quick video guys leave a trade better than you find it leave me a comment we'll see you guys next time